Hey, what's up? Today we are going to have a look at the histopathological features of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. We all commonly call it as spin box tumor. This tumor usually has a variable biological behavior and it usually affects individuals who are about 30 to 40 years of age group. In the location, it usually affects the molar region or even the angle ramus region. So without further ado, let's get started. This is the lower power view of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor and as we can clearly see at this magnification itself we can see some calcified deposition here and these are the areas of dystrophic calcifications and that is the reason why we see uh, radio opacities within the radiolucency when we take a panoramic radiograph and one more feature if you notice this mass is not encapsulated so CEOTs are usually unencapsulated mass and these are locally infiltrative. Let us zoom in into this particular tissue section and see what else we see. This area is good in this particular tissue section. We tend to see a lot of epithelial cells admixed within the calcifications. At the same time, we are also seeing some large areas of pink homogeneous eosinophilic masses. So here basically I'm seeing three components. Number one, I see a lot of epithelial cells. These are all epithelial cells, number one. Number two, I see some calcifications happening. And number three, I see some homogeneous appearing eosinophilic masses. These are the only essential three features of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. Number one, if you come to these epithelial cells, the epithelial cells do not have a specific arrangement, something like a follicle or they're not arranged in islands. Instead, the epithelial cells in CEOTs are arranged in, uh, in sheets. You tend to see all these cells are arranged in sheets. And if you observe these cells, these cells are dark staining, hyperchromatic, and not only the hypochromatic, if you see the shape of these epithelial cells, the nuclei, especially some of the nuclei are larger, some of the nuclei are smaller, and these indicate some kind of uh, pleomorphic appearing nuclei. Though I I'm using the word pleomorphic, uh, definitely the CEOTs are not malignant, these are definitely benign in nature. So the pleomorphism appearing nuclei is one of the characteristic feature of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. One more important point of CEOTs are the presence of your intercellular junctions maybe i can show better in uh, uh, different areas uh, this area is good if you clearly see look at these epithelial cells beautifully showing the intercellular junctions between these cells this is one of the most important characteristic feature apart from their presence in sheets and being hyperchromatic these cells show very very prominent intercellular junctions Number two, coming to the calcifications, these calcifications are globular, amphophilic or you know, typical lamellated appearance or concentric rings of calcifications. This is one beautiful area of calcifications. You notice this, here we see two focal spots of calcifications and if you keenly notice this, the calcifications is happening by layers. So this kind of concentric deposition of calcium salts happening and this concentric deposition of calcium is uh, what we typically call as the uh, lice gang rings of calcifications. Apart from these epithelial cells, we also tend to see large pink eosinophilic masses. What do you see here? Huge mass of tissue, pink eosinophilic appearing, uniform appearing mass of tissue. And this is what is linked to like amyloid like material which is deposited uh, within the calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. This amyloid like material stains positive for special stains, something like Congo red or thioflavin T or crystal violet which also stains typical amyloid which is deposited elsewhere in the body. Uh, hence, this is linked to that amyloid-like material. So this is the same tissue section that is stained using a Congo red. The previous one was hematoxylin and eosin stain, the more commonly used one, whereas this is a special stain that is typically used to stain that amyloid protein, what I was talking previously. So if you see this particular tissue, this area has taken up that bright uh, red-orange color, which is so typical of the Congo red stain. Let's zoom in into a higher power view when you see this bright red-orange color, which is positive for this uh, uh, pink eosinophilic masses that was deposited earlier in the tissue section. All these areas, you tend to see this red-orange areas. And this is uh, so typical. These are positive for the Congo red. There are other stains like thioflavin T and the crystal violet to stain that amyloid protein, what I was talking previously. Sometimes even the epithelial cells are also known to show that some clear cell changes or vacuolated changes. Here in this view, you can see the epithelial cells. Compare the epithelial cells here to here. These epithelial cells appear larger nuclei, whereas here if you see some vacuolated changes or clear cell changes, 
are also noted. However, the presence of this clear cell changes within the calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor is not a mandatory feature. The mandatory feature are, are only these three. I mean, the cells should be present in uh, sheets. Uh, and these cells are hypochromatic with bizarre appearing nuclei, sometimes even uh, binucleated cells, hypochromatic nuclear cells. At the same time, these cells show typical intercellular junctions and tend to have a lot of pink eosinophilic masses uh, along with these uh, calcifications. And these are the essential features of calcifying epithelial or ontogenic tumor. Regarding its pathogenesis, it is usually said that the cells from stratum intermedium are usually responsible for the formation of uh, pinbox tumor. When it comes to the differential diagnosis, we need to consider uh, certain lesions, especially when the lesion is not showing any calcification. Say in its earlier stages, we might have to consider certain lesions like even amyloblastomas or even dentigeresis in the differential diagnosis. But however, if the lesion starts showing calcifications, maybe later stages, we might have to consider lesions like calcifying odontogenic cyst, also commonly called as gorlin cyst, or sometimes even your lesions like amyloblastic fibroodontomes or odontomes, even if the lesion is showing a lot of calcifications when the lesion tends to show mixed radiolucent, radio opaque uh, areas. In such instances, we might have to even consider other lesions such as uh, your bone lesions such as your ossifying fibromas or even osteoblastomas. Um, however, histological differential diagnosis, as I've already told you, the classical features uh, can help you easily diagnose the pinbox tumor. However, the closest differential diagnosis uh, which I can think of is your adenomatoid odontogenic tumors where we uh, typically see a lot of tumor cells in nodular form which secretes uh, droplets of eosinophilic material which might appear quite similar to the eosinophilic masses what was previously described. But however, the calcifications, uh, lice ganglions of calcifications and a huge mass of pink eosinophilic material will definitely help us to diagnose the uh, pinbox tumor. Uh, it is even said that the calcifications or lice gang rings of calcifications can be even seen in uh, AOT and hence AOT has to be considered in the differential diagnosis. If you think this video has helped you understand calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor, please show your appreciation by liking it, sharing with your friends. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed yet and do not forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with my next upcoming video and as usual, I will see you all in my next. Thank you.